Howdy folks, today we are looking at another Marantz 2220. This is not the super ugly one from the other day. This is a just barely a little bit ugly one uh, that I picked up uh, very recently. And this one I got uh, largely because the price was right and also because it's really nice to have two of the same thing when you're doing troubleshooting. And the uh, the ugly one from before, after it was cleaned up, has a really non-trivial idle hiss. And reading around on the traditional forums and all that kind of stuff, it was... Uh, I see a lot of people saying, oh yeah, it's just the way it is, it's old equipment, but uh, I've never... You know, I've never had any of my vintage receivers have this much kind of just hiss when sitting there doing nothing. And so I wanted to pick up another one and see if it really was you know, kind of identical across them, or if it was something specifically wrong in that unit. And this one turns out to indeed have the same hiss, but I'm not, I'm not willing to say that it's, uh, that we're just going to deal with it. Instead, I'm going to try and figure out what it is, you know, hunt it down, all that good stuff. But that's not what we're doing in today's video. Today's video is going to be uh, pretty much purely cosmetic. How are we uh, you know, I've, I've posted the kind of before and after of the other one, and I've had several people ask, you know, what's the actual procedure that I go through when, uh, when cleaning these things up. So this one's not going to be, not going to be quite as, uh, uh, let's see, compelling as far as the uh, before and after. Uh, not as much difference there because it's just a lot cleaner to start with. But uh, I'm actually going to go through the whole procedure that I do and uh, let people see exactly how this goes. So I guess we'll start by pulling the knobs, which should just come off. They can be a little fussy. You never want to have to pry on these things, but if you do, make sure you're using plastic tools. If you're using uh, any sort of metal tools, like, you know, a flat blade screwdriver, to do your prying, you're gonna mar up the face. You're much more likely to bend the uh, bend the uh, shaft of the potentiometer, and you're also likely gonna mark up the uh, inside of the knob as well. Oh yeah, something I want to uh, show you, and I should really unplug this before I uh, go much further than where I am now. But uh, this guy does uh, does power on, and uh, it's got the uh, yeah. Besides having that problem. Uh, it's got the kind of uh, ugly hellish green is uh, what I've heard it called by several people. As the uh, the bulbs age they put out more yellow and the uh, the vellum or whatever the uh, color filter back there also uh, is known to change tint a little bit. And uh, this guy's looking pretty dim. It's still fairly blue. Uh, and then the colors here don't match. Uh, just to uh, you know, show a quick, uh, quick little walkthrough here while we've while we've got it uh, up and running. We're on uh, FM here, but it does actually tune in pretty nicely. So, yeah, it's really not too bad. Uh, as far as the uh, tuner functionality, you can see the meter over here jumping around like it should. So the tuner on this one works a lot better than the tuner on the other one, which uh, gives me, uh, coming back to that standard of comparison, I can do some poking around on this guy and see what's, see what's different there. But if you want to hear the, the hiss that we'll uh, get into later, let me flip this over to aux and just take a listen. And the balance doesn't affect it at all. It stays in both channels. This one sounds like it's a little worse on the left. The treble really affects it. Oh yeah, this one this one has another fun problem, which uh, I'll uh, have to get into evaluating this one. The other one does not do this, but if you listen, 
it goes into some kind of oscillation feedback loop if you crank the bass up. So that's going to be that's going to be fun to troubleshoot. But yeah, you can hear the the hiss here. And let me see if I can bring this up to a uh, kind of normal listening volume, and you can hear how loud the hiss is. I'll take that back down. Okay, I guess you can't really hear it on this one at oops at that level of volume. If you take it up a little bit, you can hear it. On the other one, it's uh, it's a little bit worse at uh, your normal listening volumes. You can you can hear the hiss uh, quite audibly. So yeah, you know, and that being notably worse on one side than the other will actually give me some uh, ability to compare as well. So those are a couple things we'll play with. This one also, I don't know if you see here, when you turn the volume all the way down, it uh, goes back and uh, actually has noise again. There's noise on the right when holding the volume all the way down. So potentially that could just be the volume switch needing to be cleaned. Um, but you can hear you can hear a bunch of scratching here as we, we play around with things. Volume knob seems pretty clean. The uh, treble and bass, there's a little bit of noise on the treble here. Um, let's see. Uh, this one has uh, the rear, uh, the speaker connections are a little crappy for the, uh, the mains. That's something else we'll deal with in a future video. But anyway, that's enough, uh, you know, kind of talking through things here. Let's uh, get into the, uh, get into tearing it down, cleaning it up. You know, just making it look nice, and then we'll we'll have a whole other video on, uh, you know, taking care of the various sound issues. So let's get going. All right, so that doesn't look quite as bad on the inside as the other one, but it's still pretty awful. Very, very dusty. Let me see, does this... Eh, it kind of wipes off. I think this is still gonna be a uh, candidate for the, uh, for the dishwasher, though, not for just blowing out with an air gun. I don't think that's gonna be, that's gonna be enough. I uh, may give it a shot and see how it does just to uh, hedge the risk here, but uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But before we go there, let's uh, approach the, uh, the silver face. Okay, I guess they are all the same length. When I was uh, pulling them out, they looked like they were, uh, they, they were different lengths, but they're not. So all good there. And slide that guy off. And these tend to not come off. At least not easily. They're not supposed to come off. So let's start with the uh, We'll start with the switches, with the, uh, not the switches, but the, uh, the switch covers here that, uh, that did not come off. And the way I do these is with simple green on a cloth here. Fold it up so we can get above and below. Have to be careful of the dial indicator. Don't want to be knocking that out of place.
All right, and then it's the same basic thing on the uh, tuning wheel. Uh, this one, this one, the uh, the black is pretty good. On the other one, the uh, black had faded substantially, and uh, I wound up touching it up all the way around with a uh, sharpie. I tried using automotive plastic restorer on it, rubber and plastic restorer, and that just didn't have any effect at all. So going over it with a sharpie took a uh, took a lot of time because you have to be really really careful kind of you know drawing in following the lines here and then cleaning up the rim on the on the metal as you go but uh it did come out come out looking nice at the end okay and i think that'll do for this area right here Let's see, I'm just kind of looking at the, uh, the face here, trying to decide how far into it I want to go. Because the, uh, the face back here, it's like you want to get the dust off of it, but you want to do as little messing with it as possible because you don't want to streak it up and all that kind of stuff. It uh, does streak very easily, and it's very difficult to get the streaks back out. So instead of taking my, taking my chances there, I'm going to try and do as little touching on it as possible here. So I think for the main unit, the next thing we're going to do is uh, throw it in the dishwasher. No, we're not going to throw it in the dishwasher. We're going to try going at it with a uh, air compressor and if that doesn't get it clean enough then we're going to throw it in the dishwasher and all of our not streaking arguments go to hell um, but we'll deal with that uh, but before we do that uh, while we've got you on the bench let's uh, clean up the rest of the face so take this guy down and we'll just clean this up i'm just going to use my my same simple green rag here and there's not this one doesn't look all that dirty so it should i would think just mostly white clean a little grittier than uh, than i thought so we'll go ahead and spray it down here let that sit for a few minutes I'm going to be careful when you're doing this not to touch the back of the uh, back of the glass here for the same reason as before. It's easy to get streaks on it, which are then really hard to deal with because they're in the back. I don't worry as much about the front because the front gets dusty and, you know, kind of gross no matter what you do. So you're going to have to clean the front as a normal part of living with the receiver. But you do want to do anything you can to avoid getting streaks on the back where you can't get to them. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do on this face piece is a uh, little bit riskier, and uh, your mileage may vary, so you know don't take this as gospel. Um, and that's a uh, using melamine foam, also known as Magic Eraser. So you have to be really, really careful with this stuff because this is abrasive. It's like using a very fine sandpaper. And so when you're looking at this, the thing you have to con be concerned about is all of the, the writing on it is uh, screen printed. And there is very little protection over the uh, screen printing. I don't know if there's even a clear coat on it or not. I would assume there is to uh, prevent the aluminum from oxidizing too quickly. Um, and uh, you could see on the uh, on the super dirty one, somebody had tried to clean it uh, and rubbed straight through the uh, through the printing. Either that or just usage, they had worn the printing off. But either way, um, I had to be more careful over there around what I was doing because the there was already no protection on the writing, and it needed to be 
well, going over it at all with an abrasive would rub the writing off. But here, this one looks to be in pretty good shape. It doesn't look like it's been uh, been through that kind of abuse. So I'm just going to go over it really, really lightly with the foam. And I think I'm going to just put the uh, simple green straight on the foam here. And be careful with your foam on the edges, you can tear it up. But of course that matters less than uh, destroying the faceplate. All right, and then we're just gonna go back with our microfiber cloth, to take off the film here. Don't see any fingerprints there, so I'm gonna call myself lucky. Yeah, and like I said, I wanna be really, really careful cleaning back here, because I really don't wanna to touch the glass back here. And I'm not as concerned about back here looking good because it's hidden. But it's still good to get the dust out where we can. You'd use a toothbrush here as well. It's one of the things I found works pretty well for fighting some of the uh, tougher grit is an old uh, ultrasonic toothbrush. All right, I think that's, uh, that's looking pretty good. About as good as it's going to get for a used piece. It does have a couple of imperfections, but uh, that kind of is what it is. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is clean up the, uh, the screws here. So the screws are uh, these are actually plated. I know this from uh, playing around in uh, with the other one. And underneath the plating, they're a uh, they're a nice brass. And you know this may be sacrilege here, and uh, might not be what uh, some folks like. But I really like the look of the brass actually. So instead of trying to work really hard to preserve the uh, the plating here. I might just take the plating down and polish up the brass. But let's uh, let's play with a couple things and see how they look. So this is a set of multiple grit polishing cloths. This one out here is I don't remember something like fifteen hundred. Um, all the way up through, you know, some ridiculously high polish grit. And so we're just going to, you know, run across. And I like to do this with a drill. So I'm going to try off the top, actually, seeing if I can polish up just using uh, the high grit and see if I can save the uh, if I can save the plating and if I start to go through the plating at all or if I don't like how this looks I'll just take it down to brass like I did on the other ones and uh, polish it straight across. You know it doesn't look bad but I think I like the brass look better. I want to see if I can get it any cleaner there. Let's go a little grittier. It's getting better, but it's still got a lot of surface imperfection. Yeah, it's still got scratches in the surface that I don't like. Yeah, I think to uh, get rid of the scratches, I am going to be down to brass by the time I get there. Let's see. It's still got scratches. 
Not sure if you can see them on the video, but I can see them in real life. Interestingly, I'm not getting the uh, real brassy finish on these. I'm wondering if this might be a uh, you know minor deviation between the models is the uh, the materials that the screws are made out of. Okay, let's uh, just run it through the uh, paces now. Okay, now it's starting to get that uh, that brass tone as it polishes up. So yeah, you can see there it polishes up to a uh, like I said, brass kind of gold tone. So yeah, I think we'll go through and do the rest of them. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what we're gonna do. There you can see we all came out with a uh, nice high polish and it gives a little bit of contrast. I generally don't like the uh, look of gold on silver, but I think it does give a, a nice contrast and a nice little dress up on these uh, on these uh, old Marantzes. So, you know, some people may like it, some people may not. I may get comments from people telling me that I'm, you know, destroying the authenticity and, you know, that's cool. So yeah, that's, uh, that's where we're going to go with these. So... Next step is going to be uh, heading outside and uh, hitting this thing with an air compressor. So we will see how that goes. All right, so we're out in the garage now where we can actually uh, hit this thing with some compressed air and see how that does. And yeah, we'll uh, figure out next steps from there. All right, I am definitely calling that not good enough. This is kind of your sticky caked on residue here. I'm really not a fan of that. I don't want to get closer with the uh, compressed air for fear that I'll start knocking components off the board. So we're going to move to water. This uh, is a bit, uh, you know, non-conformist here. Again, I'll uh, have folks saying that uh, you should never do this. It'll destroy your equipment. And uh, yeah, I'm going to put my disclaimer here of do not stick your equipment in the dishwasher. It's a terrible idea. And uh, with that said, I'm going to throw this in the dishwasher. And here we are outside taking a uh, few hours to dry in the sun. There's really no other way to dry these effectively after going through something like a dishwasher. So if you're going to try anything that involves getting the inside of a receiver really quite damp, make sure you're being smart about it and you have the time and you have the daylight and let it bake in the sun for hours and hours. Uh, you want to go out and turn it every now and again, make sure it's staying in direct sunlight. You want to shake out any, uh, any droplets you can get to come out. You want to change its orientation so that water, you know, is always running out of any different nooks and crannies, crevices. And you want to make sure you really, really seriously let it dry. And once again, I'm going to say, if you decide to put your receiver in the dishwasher, it is not my fault if it dies. And yeah, that's about it. Everything you do, it, you do at your own risk. Thanks. We are back on the bench now after some uh, time out in the sun. And the only evidence that we've been uh, through the water is uh, the condensation back here. Now, I know from experience with the prior uh, 2220 that uh, that condensation will disperse on its own so I'm not going to worry about it at all. Uh, let's see where do I want to go with it. There are a couple of things I want to do here uh, before plugging in, powering on, all that good stuff. I think the uh, the first one is I want to go through and hit all of these switches with some uh, 
deoxid D5 and hit all of the faders with some F5 and see if we can at least get them as uh, as clean as they can be. Get rid of the uh, get rid of any scratching that comes from comes from those. And I know some folks might say uh, putting deoxid on the front here doesn't do anything. It's not actually going to get into the switch. This is another one of these that I know from uh, historical experience with the prior one actually does work. So I'm going to do it again on this one. Okay, the next thing we're going to do here is replace the uh, replace the incandescent lamps with LEDs. It's another one of those things where it's a matter of taste, but this is what I like to do, so that's what we're going to do. Just as a quick reminder of what this looks like with incandescents. Looks like one of them's burnt out over here but it's got a little bit of a, a green haze to it, which, yeah, is what it is. But uh, yeah, we'll throw some uh, blue bulbs in there and uh, see how it looks. You know, maybe while, uh, maybe while I've got it apart, I'll uh, put a few different colors in and uh, get some images of those different colors because I might want to use them in the future. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get to that. Pretty sure that bar was actually missing on the, uh, on the last one. Give you a little bit better view of what we're doing here. This one as well. Let's see. Maybe if we take the screw out, I might be able to get here. All right, we're going to start with uh, with warm white. Unfortunately, with every little test here, I'm going to have to put screws back because they prevent the uh, thing from sliding and shorting out. It will uh, short the edges of this uh, of the fuse lamp to the uh, to the case ground if you let it slide around. Don't ask me how I know that. Pretty much the same. Still has a lot of that uh, green hue to it. You can see with the uh, with the LEDs, it's got hot spots and cold spots. I'm not really a big fan of that. I wonder if I can come up with something to uh, to diffuse that a bit. Because yeah, you can see 90 is bright, 92 is dim, 94 is bright, 96 is dim. It's because of where the uh, where the actual LED modules are. The thing I want to try here is just uh, turning them around. Eh, it's consistent, but it's dim. I'm not a fan of that at all. I think I'll take uh, bright with hot spots over dim any day. I may have to look into uh, some kind of a uh, diffusion film, something that I can put 
right on the back or maybe wrap around the LEDs or something like that. So we'll have to do a little bit of digging into that, but uh, that's not something that's going to happen today. So let's uh, keep moving through, moving through some colors and see what other looks we can get here. Okay, we're not going to do red because I've tried red before and red doesn't show through the uh, through the color filter at all. So there's green, which is much brighter in person than it is uh, in the video, I think. It's a uh, uh, really bright, vibrant green and really doesn't look awful for those who uh, really like the uh, you know, the, the green look that Marantz's sometimes develop over time. That's really not half bad. I could see people being into that. So that's a uh, deep royal blue. Curious to see how that comes out on the video. In person, it is uh, very blue. Uh, nice and dark. Rich, looks good. Doesn't look original, of course, but looks good. This is the uh, the cool white, which I think looks pretty good. It makes a nice uh, ice blue through the uh, stock color film here. You can see it with the, uh, with the face on. Looks pretty good. And then that's the uh, the cool blue, which seems to be the uh, crowd favorite, or at least the uh, the stock crowd favorite. So that's the uh, the overall look. And again, ignore the condensation over there; that'll go away over time. And yes, I know running a receiver with condensation in it is some kind of mortal sin. Don't need comments about that. Thanks. So you can see here that uh, with the plating polished off, the screws here give just a little bit of contrast against the front, against everything being silver, and I kind of like it. And just a little bit of compare contrast here. You can barely see the difference on these. These are pretty clean to start with.
So one thing I don't really like about Marantz is that they don't have the detent in the center, which makes it much more difficult to align these. And also, a lot of times you can align it by just straightening the, uh, you know, the divide. But on Marantz, you'll see all the way to the left is kind of perpendicular to the dot. Oh, this one's actually not too bad. Perpendicular to the dot. Okay, maybe we'll cheat on this one and do it that way. All right, line that up. And we'll call that close enough. Let's see if treble is, okay, that's there. Actually, this one's pretty close. The uh, last one was not nearly so close. I wonder if the uh, potentiometers had been reinstalled, making it so that the uh, things didn't line up right anymore. Let's see, balance, we're vertical to the left. And then we're something wonky to the right. Okay, so this one we're gonna have to just kind of look at it. Let's see, it's a little bit past the right. And it's not quite to the left, so let's notch it over one more. We notch it over, now we're way past the left. And nowhere near the right. So we notch it over one. Eh, let's see if the other knob is any closer. I don't know that these are actually centered so that their line is someplace useful compared to the teeth. Don't know what the level of quality control there was. Let's see, okay, that's not quite to R. That's way past left. Try this. It's not quite to left. It's a little past R, but I think it's going to be as good as we're going to get. Let's see. Yeah, it's a little past R. And not quite to L. But yeah, it's as good as we're going to get. All right. Then finally, the volume knob, which doesn't have a center, doesn't live in a centered position, so it's a little less important that it line up exactly on its dot. So there we go, off and up. All right, so we'll turn them all the way down. And there we have it. That is a nice, clean, Marantz receiver. Put the cover back on and then we'll call this one done. At least as far as the uh, as far as the cosmetics go. Oops, one more piece. Need to put this thing back. Don't think the other one even had this piece. Seems a little interesting that this would be riding along the bottom lip here, doesn't it? It's just begging to uh, cut that. I don't think it goes above it, does it? Does it go above it? Maybe it goes above it. Yeah, I'm happier with that. Still kind of uncomfortable, but better than having it underneath. And everything still moves nicely. Now we can put the cover back on. And there you have it. A simple cosmetic refresh. 
So in the next one, we'll investigate a few things. One, the uh, stereo light not working. Uh, this is a non-trivial bulb to replace. And we'll also troubleshoot the, uh, the uh, hiss that we've got. Um, I don't have speakers hooked up so you can't hear it, but uh, it's got the hiss in the uh, left speaker. And yeah, we will we will go from there. So I guess that will do for today and we will see you in the next one.